about my eyeballs? What about what I'm looking at? I go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake. Space Force. We still have comedy though. We still have great comedy out there. There's always rambling Joe Biden. Come on. This guy is a dog whistle about as big as a foghorn. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Oh boy. Say, do you want to go inside my clubhouse? I charge $50 for a hot dog. Well, you know, the aliens could be showing up any day now. Dude, this guy's an alien. <laughs> NBC News has learned that disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein is dead. You won't release the Epstein list, so you're gonna freaking imprison yeah. Andrew Tate. You're living in the Matrix, man. There is no spoon. I represent science. You will owe nothing, and you will be happy. Hack human beings to go under the skin. See if allergies. Good. I like turtles. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome back to the show. Um, today, I got some badass guests on. I've been on one of their podcasts one time, and I was like, dude, I got to get the homies on mine. Uh, we got Kyle Richardson from the Sunday Night Secret Society, Hank P from 643 Conspiracy Podcast, and you guys know my boy K-Swag. He's been on a couple times. How you guys doing tonight? Good. Holy good. Friday. Friday, baby. It's yeah. Friday, Friday. You guys remember that song? Yeah, I sing that every Friday. Dude. I sing you that sing it every Friday? Song. You're every that Friday. asshole? It's Friday, Friday. Oh. <laughs> and that's all I know, but yeah. Dude, that, that song's so annoying when it finally like enters your brain and doesn't leave, but at least it's Friday, I guess. Only on Fridays, you don't mind. Um, so a little bit, everybody knows about Corey, um, Kyle, I know you got a podcast. You want to break or touch on what you do, what you cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Hank is actually my co-host on <clears throat> Sunday night and then, um, vice versa. I'm, I'm, I'm his co-host over at six, four, three. And yeah, we kind of go over everything. Um, I almost now looking back, I almost regret well, I don't, it's not that I regret it, but Sunday Night Secret Society, it seems like I only focus on like uh, conspiracies and what have you, but we dig into every, I mean, we literally go everywhere um, with the show, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we bang that out usually once a week and um, it's a cool show. I think, I think it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, check it out. And Hank, you're the co-host. Yeah, man. Um, It's just kind of how things shaked out you know his co-host started going through a bunch of stuff and you know my my original co-host that I first started this with almost a year ago he ended up passing away like right after we started the show and our mutual friend uh Drew from down there in Florida he jumped in but his life got so crazy like he ended up having a wreck and like he's still waiting to have surgery on his neck and his back and shit. And so he had to step down from the show. So Kyle was like, I'll step in. And I was like, well, fuck it. I'll be your co host. And so now we're e each other's co hosts. But uh, like he was saying over there on Sunday night, it's mostly a, a conspiracy themed show. Usually it's a round table style, but every once in a while we'll bang out something by ourselves. And then over on the 643 conspiracy, I like to hit on a lot of baseball a lot of um sports in general but my main my main deal is baseball and then of course i'll dig into my fair share of conspiracies too but glad to be on appreciate it appreciate the invite and looking heck, forward to the talk heck yeah man no i'm so stoked you guys are both here and K, K swag uh you don't know this but kyle was like dude i want to i want to get on a pod with K swag i, I really jive with that guy <laughs> so so I'm glad you guys can meet up. That's dope yep. about your guys' podcast. Sorry to hear about your loss, bro. Like that sucks. And then uh your homie wasn't he isn't he a detective, Drew? Yeah. He got in a bad car crash, huh? Yeah, on his way to work one morning, totaled out a brand new car. Dude. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, and that was probably when we, when was that, Kyle? Probably mid no early November, late October, early November. Yep. 
Yeah, that's super unfortunate. I I consider myself lucky. I've never been any any crazy car crash, knock on wood, uh, anything like that. And uh, I think that's the scariest thing when my wife takes my daughter and they go to their friend her friend's house. Like I always trip, just like, dear God, please take care of them on this drive. Like every time they leave, dude, I say a prayer for them. And uh, you never know on the road, dude. Uh, but I'm way more scared to fly planes, but we won't get into that. But um, <laughs> thanks, guys, for coming on uh, today. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about some football right off the bat. I'm a huge KC Chiefs fan. Uh, I, I want to know who's your guys' teams, like all that good stuff. We'll start with you, K-Swag. Spit out your team, wh who you guys got. Uh, I'm a Bengals fan. I've, I've been a Bengals fan. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a USC for college, and so when – um. When Carson Palmer got drafted by um, the Bengals, I didn't really, really have like an NFL team, but I was like, I'm going to follow his career. And then it's just stuck ever since. And so I've been through, um, you know, if we make the playoffs, like we won the Super Bowl, but now we actually are contenders. And it's, it's just, it's just weird. I like to think, Oh, we actually have a football team now, you know? So you guys um, got you guys got my Chiefs most of the time. Burrow head. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Who um I forget who said it. Somebody on your team said uh they were talking about the the Bengals, Kansas City. They're like, it's a big rivalry. And and the Chiefs fan was like, um, well, it has to it has to be competitive to be a rivalry and we, we can't beat them. <laughs> yep. That was was that but, last year? I mean, last year. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So. Yep, that yeah. was a good game last year, dude. That game was crazy, but yeah. Kyle, yeah. who's your team? So, sadly, <laughs> I'm a Cowboys fan. Okay. And the streak has not been broken. The yep. streak has not been broken, man. We literally I'm I'm blown away that we lost to the to the Packers first round of playoffs. I should not be blown away, but I am blown away. I for sure thought it, I thought we had it in the bag and but um, we're classic. the boys. Classic. We got, <laughs> we got Sadie. We got Michael Parsons. We spent two weeks in Super Bowl. Oh, uh, man. I got – my sister is a huge Cowboys fan. She dated uh, the trainer when – or a trainer like 10 years ago, and she got a dance with Tony Romo at the Cowboys dance or whatever, and so she loves them. But I'm always like Hank over there. I'm like – Cause at the very beginning of every season, man, you guys are like looking hot, yeah. you know, and they're always projected yeah. to be one of the top three teams in the league every preseason. And then it doesn't yeah, matter every... what they do during the regular <laughs> season. They're going to choke in the playoffs. It's yeah. can, based on, based it's like, on, Hey, well, I'm sorry. Why play the season? <laughs> Dude, it, it really is. And we literally have never. So the Packers have never lost at Dallas's home stadium for like I don't know how long and we always 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 blow it every single playoff <laughs> every single playoff here every single time and it's round one every single time um but based on Hank's sweet comments about the Cowboys you can probably already guess his team <laughs> uh the uh I'm the I, I'm a faithful fan of the uh, far superior team in the NFC East, <laughs> the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right. That's right. And, and I think it's hilarious that that I love Kyle like a brother, and we're each other's co-hosts. But our favorite NFL teams are bitter rivals. <laughs> it's absolutely no, it, yeah. It's kind of the same with K Swag Chiefs Bengals. Like yeah, I I when the Bengals come to town, I'm like oh, I hate it, and then. And then vice versa. I'm sure yeah. they hate the Chiefs, but that's just how it goes. Um, Eagles, man, Kelsey brothers, like I like those two. I've been listening to their podcast, uh, New Heights. Yeah, I've been listening to that since it first started. It's good. I didn't I didn't realize how I good love it. Was. it. Yeah. And it, it means a little more to me. Uh, last year when my father's dad passed away, me and one of my little brothers took a trip down to Mississippi for the funeral, and we just listened to just nonstop on the way down there new heights and so ever since then it's kind of been like i don't know i think i just think about the time i got to spend with my brother while we were bonding over 
talking about Super Bowls and Patriots Eagles games and good stuff. But yeah, dude, what? I I don't care that Travis is probably Mr. Pfizer. I don't <laughs> I I don't care that it whatever point you want to argue. I don't I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Them boys play good football and they have a really good podcast. You know what's funny is you made me feel that way. Like for a while there, I, like I was like, how should I feel about this whole Travis Kelsey situation? Like he was my favorite tight end and he was like, you know, he's the best. He threw that flag at the, at the, or the ref threw the, the flag at him and then he grabs the he towel, threw it. throws it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I loved it. I was like, this guy's awesome. And then to see him do, you know, he made a, Twenty million dollar deal with Pfizer, and you know what? Power to him. He did it. He he made some money off the deal. He's crushing it. He's he's got Taylor Swift on his side. I don't know how good that is, other than the fact that she's a billionaire. But my wife, my wife will not stop playing her. She loves her. Uh, it is what it is. And even if it's yeah. not a legitimate relationship, that has to be the smartest PR move in the history of PR moves. 100%. literally turned millions of people who know nothing about football into football fans overnight. Yeah. yeah. And we got so many that much more money. Yeah. That's that much more money generated for the old, no fun league. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. And like, yeah, I have a, a boss that comes up to me and he, he's always like, uh, cause there's a Jersey out and it's all blue and it says, Mr. Pfizer. And then on the back, it says 87. Like, he's like, you gotta get that, sh- that, that Jersey, bro. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Like it's, it is what it is. But yeah. At the end of the day, I don't look at athletes any different than I look at entertainers, musicians, or artists. You gotta be able to separate the art from the artist. I love listening to people who I don't have anything in common with, you know, none of their political beliefs, not none of that, but do I enjoy their art that they've provided? Yeah. Do I give a damn? And I know that you weren't necessarily gearing for this right this second, but like, we're going to end up getting into it. I don't don't care that the league is rigged. I don't care (laughs) because I enjoy it. Like, I'm one of the – I don't know if it's because of the bullshit I endured when I was a kid or it's just my timing in life, but, like, I'm – you turn that TV on, dude, and if you give me five seconds, I'm glued into it. My wife can be sitting three three inches away from me on the couch and will be having a full-blown conversation with me, and if I'm watching that TV, I don't hear nothing. <laughs> and I was like, huh? And she'll be so mad. And it's <laughs> – can't help it, man. That my I, I'm I, I guess my brain waves are just easily transmuted into the the low vibrational ones. But, but I, I don't care, man. Like I, I enjoy watching sports. I enjoy watching football as pussified as they've made it to at this point. I, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna act like I don't know it's rigged, and I'm gonna act surprised when the script plays out exactly like it plays out. I just don't <laughs> care. So you let's know get, what I'm saying? Like, let, yeah, I, I need something to hold on to in this world. And, and you, you can't have music cause it's Illuminati. You can't have football cause it's rigged. You can't have baseball cause it's Masonic. You can't have movies cause they're all subliminal. Like, I, yeah, I'm with you, bro. What I, am I supposed <laughs> to do? I didn't start thinking this way until I was on the podcast with you recently. And I was like, you transform my mind when it came to just accepting <laughs> it and watching it and enjoying it. Um, like for instance, I'm watching Flora Bama shore right now. Cause I can't seem to find anything I want to watch. And I just, I just like seeing all the drama. And I'm like, I'm like, I know that they're dumbing down me because all I'm watching is, 23 to 26 year olds getting drunk and fighting but for yeah. some odd reason i'm like at the end of the night i'm like this is entertaining crack a beer watch it and i enjoy it and then i go to sleep and i go to work but you're right like the part of me feels like society and just like you kind of played out it's all it's all prepped just like slaves back in the day during pharaoh you know they would work their ass off but then they'd give them a, a bunch of mead aka beer and bread 
and then they were happy drinking and go to bed. And then they go about their day the next day as a slave. And it kind of feels the same way, just in a, in a more comfortable setting. But, um, sure. Back to and, what, and what's the one, one thing you hear, I'm sorry to interrupt. What's the no. one thing you hear when, when you start talking about anything sports or entertainment related in the conspiracy world, it's bread and circuses, it's bread and circuses. Yeah. You know what, motherfucker? I might be hungry and bored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, um, who do you guys see? Chiefs versus the Ravens. Who do you guys see winning that game on Sunday? <clears throat> we'll start I with don't you. I think there's. Okay, go for it, dude. Go for it. Hey, go for it. I don't see there's any path that, that KC wins, man. And I hate that because I like Patrick Mahomes. I like. Travis Kelsey, I think that there's legitimate superstars in the making in uh Rashi Rice and um Pacheco. Oh, I love like, y'all have studs, but Baltimore's defense does not play, and Kansas City's defense is not like it was in years recent past. You- I don't know if if it's a straight up shootout, it's any it's any anybody's guess because Mahomes is not afraid of throwing for seven eight hundred yards in a game, and Lamar is gonna Lamar. He's gonna put up fifty by himself if he has to. But I can see Baltimore coming up with some potential huge stops where Kansas City might struggle. But then again, the script might be scripted. So. What about I don't know. I think I think at the end of the day, I think Baltimore walks away. Either either Baltimore blows them out or Kansas City wins by a handful. Okay. Okay. No. <clears throat> K Swag, what's your thoughts? What do you, who do you see winning that game? Um well I I um I can't go for Baltimore ever. So I'm gonna say Kansas City Chiefs. Come on. Just because I can't stand Baltimore. Can't stand Baltimore. Can't stand Pittsburgh. Can't stand Cleveland. Just can't stand them. <laughs> Anybody in our division can't stand them. Touché. So, um, um, who do I who do I want to win? Uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Come on. Who do I think is going to win? Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let's go. Uh, Kyle, what about you, man? Ah, uh, man, I'm I'm based off of. I know this sounds super corny, but but based off of the script I, i'm kind of i don't know i'm kind of torn on this because we've seen the videos on like instagram where there was a few nfl players i forgot exactly who they were and they have the little they have the little blue notebook with the script or whatever and they're kind of reading reading it as it goes and then you had like little wayne sitting down getting the script earlier this year i don't know if they're if because there's been a lot of like script talk, I feel like this year out of all the years or this past year, there's been more talk about the NFL being scripted and rigged. So I don't know if they're going to like let that happen as far as like the Super Bowl logos go. Um, I still think it, until something else happens, I think it's going to be Ravens and I think it's going to be the 49ers and I think the 49ers win. Okay. Okay. Is it and that's the thing, like um I've I've seen the logo. If you look up for the logo of Super Bowl, what is it, fifty seven? What is this year's? Or I don't know I what think it it's is. that sounds about right. <clears throat> well, if you look at the logo of last year, <laughs> it's got green and red. And who was it? It was the Chiefs Eagles. This year it's purple and red. So that's why people are leaning towards uh Ravens, 49ers. So that's where we're getting this. Like anybody listening who's like, what are they talking about scripted? What are they talking about? It's rigged. Basically, I mean, if you pay attention, the last three years, I think the one before that was yellow and orange. And that was when it was Bengals, Rams. Yep. And and so it's it's just interesting when you see the logo that they create before the season even starts, they have the Super Bowl logo out. And so that's where that's where we're coming up with this. Anybody who's like, these freaking conspiracy idiots. And I have friends who literally hit me up and they're like, you're an idiot if you think it's scripted, all that kind of stuff. And the, and so just pay attention. I mean, if it is Ravens 49ers, that is very interesting that it is purple and red. So then it lines up with that whole logo situation. But um, 
I, I really like this San Fran t- Detroit game. Um, Detroit, you know, the Lions, they haven't made it to the playoffs in what, like 20 years? Something no, like that. Sir. 30. It's been since 1991. It's been almost 33 years. That's crazy. 30. That's a long ass time. And so you got the Lions playing the Niners. I got some friends that are Niners out here. I'm sure um, Kyle does too, because we're out here in SoCal. I love watching them lose. Uh, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, I I don't know. They're they're a really good team. But, you know, Green Bay, I thought Green Bay was going to get them too. So I, who knows, man, maybe the Lions will pull it out. <clears throat> but it's going to be interesting. And, and I wanted to get you guys' take on your thoughts of football in general and if it's rigged. That was going to be the next question, but you guys clearly – Corey, what do you think? Is it rigged? To you, um, uh, n- not from a player standpoint, I don't think. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't think the 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 players um don't catch a pass or don't get a first down because they're not supposed to win. But I think there's um definitely some some odd scenarios that take place, like that um the Detroit Cowboys game with the the two point conversion we when you've seen that. so many Tripping so call. much proof that that they both went over there and said eligible and then all of a sudden he wasn't eligible and they had to talk about it you know what i mean like hey did he say he was eligible i think he did well he did it okay okay no he did it you know like that's how i think the conversation would have went um so i think that there's definitely um there's people that want it to go a certain direction and they have the power to make it go that direction even during the game. So um, I want to say it's, it's, I guess that is the definition of rigged, you know, but I, I don't, I don't know if it's totally scripted like they know beforehand because, you know, injuries happen, other things happen where, you know, you can't bet everything on this player uh, to, to, to script the game and then they get hurt like um Aaron Rodgers, you know, for like everybody thought he was going to have a big year, even everybody did. And four plays in, he's done for the season. So, like if there was a script, I wonder how many um like how many times they have to change it during the season. So, Absolutely. I would I would say it's and and another thing is with all the betting now, you know, like they have the commercials like, "Oh, you could use this app." Um and and so of course there's a there's a bigger um, push for the overs for the unders for for certain things for certain games, um, and I bet people you know I've never betted on it but I know people that have betted like you know five ten dollars but there's people that bet hundreds thousands you know millions and and you know so I don't know is betting legal where you guys are at like in Idaho that's where Corey's at. Are you in Mississippi, Hank? Arkansas. Arkansas. My bad. Is is betting legal up. in both? Okay. Okay. Man, there's so much that Corey just said that there that makes for really good conversation. Um, the first thing you said that I want to hit on you, it does make sense that at at the very least, ninety eight to ninety nine percent of the players are not in on some sort of rigging or scripting because. At the end of the day, from the player's perspective, there is money, life-changing, generational wealth-type money attached to numbers. And you can't tell me that they're intentionally not trying to go get extra money. Yeah. The other thing is you can I, – I, I, if it's not the players, then who is it? And I think we know exactly who it is. It's the officials. And it's not just the officials on the field, on any given field at any given time, because who do we know supersedes the officials on the field's call? The people back in New York who sit there and watch every game that's going on and they scrutinize every play. New York has the ability to stop a play and pull a player out for safety protocol. If they see 
Johnny Bag of Donuts just got his bell rung toting the rock. He goes back to the huddle. He's a little woozy standing there about to, you know, they can stop the play and say, hey, get Bag of Donuts out. You know what I'm saying? He's got concussion protocol. They can do that. It happened in um, the 49ers and Green Bay game, if I'm not mistaken. The 49ers guy had got – it was a lineman. I think he was pulled out of the game because New York said, hey, get him out. Um, They also have the ability to veto penalty calls thrown on the field. So the – Law, the arm of the officiating that is in New York probably has the most to do with it. But it's also got to be, to an extent, the owners, the commissioner, any other executives yeah. in the NFL. Um, and it's also, I believe, the analysts. <clears throat> Maybe not every analyst, but you can't tell me that the the, the big Jim Nance and uh, – even though he's not in the NFL, but like if it, the, the Kirk Herb streets of the NFL world, you know what I'm saying? Like the guys that every on NFL, you know, they, there was a clip <clears throat> from the beginning of the year where this dude was predicting the Eagles season through week nine. And it was exactly what happened. And I, I think it's just, I think these analysts know before the players know what's going to happen. Then you were mentioning injuries and I being, being the skeptical minded person I am would argue, especially since you brought up Aaron, Aaron discount, (laughs) double check Rogers. Did he really get hurt? Mr. Corey, did he really get hurt four plays into the season? Because who in God's green earth, is fully recovered from an ACL tear less, or was it a hamstring or Achilles? It was, it was Achilles. ACL. I think it was, it was his, his, it was his Achilles. Achilles. You're right. You're right. You're right. It was his Achilles yeah. that popped. Who is recovered from a, a ACL or a, an Achilles injury in less than a year, ready to get back on the field and play football within the same season? Yeah. That doesn't happen. Yeah. I, I'm, Pat McAfee called him out on it several times. And and I think if anybody's in on some rigging, Pat McAfee and the boys got to be in on it because, like, who, who, what podcaster just has a direct line to Aaron Rodgers and, and, uh, JJ White? Like, come on now. But was Aaron Rodgers really hurt? Are some of the, now I'm not saying that some of these injuries aren't legit because, like, when Vontae's perfect, your boy, beat the living hell out of Mason Rudolph with a helmet. I'm fairly certain that was a legitimate injury, but then you look at stuff like Aaron Rodgers and and did he really get hurt or is this just part of the script? Maybe this just wasn't supposed to be New York's year. And they knew that between Brees Hall and Aaron Rodgers and Sauce Gardner and and all the stars that they had because New York had a legitimate defense. It was their defense that beat the Eagles. Yeah. I'm just saying, there's too much. If it smells like a fish and it looks like a fish, it's probably rigged. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. That, yeah, no, you bring up some great points. Um, oh, yeah. I, I it, once you yeah once you start seeing everything you know once you start diving into everything you start noticing this when you look it, it, you can't you can't help but notice it it's like your brain's already a detective with everything you're watching and so <clears throat> that's where I'm at too I I mean there's been some calls too that the Chiefs get that I'm like ooh we didn't deserve that call <laughs> and then, and then and then you know we capitalize get a first down and then push it into a field goal or a touchdown and I'm just like okay I can see why people are mad you know what I mean Well like Corey was saying in the Dallas Lions game before you even got to the controversial ineligible receiver play Dallas was penalized for a tripping call and I hate to do this because fuck them cowgirls <laughs> but it wasn't even it wasn't even the Dallas player 
Aiden Hutchinson stuck his leg out and tried to trip the <laughs> Dallas guy. And they threw it on Dallas to put them in the situation to where they had to end up going for some crazy shit. So there's definitely plenty, plenty of questionable calls on a weekly basis in the league. And let's not forget the biggest factor of this whole, is it rigged or is it not rigged thing iceberg to begin with the, the NFL operates under the same entertainment license that the WWE does. Yeah. So that means that they're not, they do not owe us anything of an honest product. They, they have all authority to manipulate whatever they want to, however they want to, because it's for entertainment purposes. Well, with that being said, I want everybody's prediction. Who's going to win the Super Bowl this year. We'll start with you, Hank. Who do you got? Give me the fight in Slim Shadies, man. Okay. So Them brothers from 8 Mile. You got the line. I think they're going to do it. I think it's the perfect Cinderella story. It I is. think there's too much money to be made with, with, with Detroit for them not to do it. What about you, Kyle? Who you got? I'm going to stick with I'm going to stick with the 49ers. I'm going to stick with uh I'm going to stick with the script, bro. I really uh, hope and I before at, real quick, I really 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 hope that is not the case. However, I am going to be over at my mom's house watching the game and I was there last Sunday watching the game or Saturday watching the game. And if the Niners aren't doing well, no bueno, man. I'm on fucking losers through shit. So, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll, I don't know. It'll, that'll call for an extra talk can or two that day. But, yeah, I'm going, I'm, 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 I think it's going to be the Niners. And uh, I hope that's not the case. That's not what I want. But that's okay. What okay. Okay, Swag, who's your prediction? Um, I'm going Detroit. Lions? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going Lions. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I have to. <laughs> I think it's funny how nobody gave Baltimore a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know. When uh, they're pr- probably realistically the favorite. But, yeah, yeah, I know. That's yeah. The I was going to say, if Brock Purdy plays like he did the last week against Green Bay, Detroit's going to dog walk them. They San Francisco's play. not been playing that great of football here lately. No. I, I, yeah, I agree. This is not the time of year to stop playing good football. My my theory, <clears throat> who I think is going to win, I'm going to say Chiefs because come on. But <laughs> the the truth is, I mean, if I'm if I'm if I'm a betting man, I think it is Baltimore. I think it is the Ravens. But if I'm a conspiracy man, I think it's the 49ers. But. Anyways, we'll I move honestly on. would not be shocked if Kansas City won the thing just because it's Kansas City, and I think they're the new New England. Yeah, it would, it would definitely stamp uh, a legitimacy on uh, Patrick Mahomes being right up there with the goat, right up with there with Brady. Like it'd be his beginnings of hey, we're going to sure. start talking about this. Um, Patrick is something else, though. You guys watch that quarterback series on Netflix? It has like Patrick Mahomes. It follows Patrick Mahomes. Uh oh, who's the guy from Minnesota Vikings? He's hilarious. He's like, You like that? Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Yeah. And uh some other Dingleberry that was playing for Atlanta last year. I can't even remember him. But Desmond Ritter. It could have been him. But you really can tell the difference between a, a championship mindset when you watch that. Like, no offense to Kirk Cousins. He he doesn't have it. Like and no, yeah, and no offense to the mm-hmm. other guy. He doesn't have it. But when you're watching Patrick Mahomes and how he thinks and how his vision is, you're like, oh, yeah, that guy's superior. You guys, we're yeah. going to get out here yeah. and we're going to throw the ball really fucking far. I'm Travis, here. you're going to catch the ball. <laughs> Who do they say he sounds like? That, that, uh, Kermit, Kermit the, frog. the Frog. Kermit the Frog, that's right. <laughs> well, we will move on from football. I love your guys' takes, and that was legit. But there's – there's some stuff happening right now this week, today, and ongoing, this whole Texas border thing. And um, we're going to get more into the political side of things and back to 
you know, the American talk. And um, right now, I'll just read something off. I think I wrote this down just to ask the question. But anyways, it says, why keep it's about the border? Why keep Texas from prote protecting their border? Clearly, this administration is trying to collapse America as we knew it and bring in the new world order that if you're listening and you and you think I'm crazy because I do talk conspiracies. <laughs> if you think, dang, Drew, you know, the vaccine, uh, you said that would kill us. I never said that, but like, I don't trust that damn thing. But then you got all these things, COVID, the vaccine. Um, uh, Joe Biden, the way he handled Iraq, just about everything Joe Biden's handled has basically been like handling dog shit. And it's just nothing good has come out of this administration. And so my question to you guys is, what do you, what do you guys think of this whole border crisis and how Joe Biden is telling Gat, what's his name again? The mayor of, uh, or the governor of Texas. Great. Abbott. Yeah. Abbott. Um, the, that he can't protect his own border. Like, what are you guys' thoughts on all that? I think that I'll, I'll go. I'll go real quick. Go I, for it. I was actually. That's funny. That's funny that that we're talking. Excuse me. Energy drink. Um, that's funny that we're talking about this because right before um, I hopped on this on your show, um, I was talking with a couple of people about that, and. I would not put it. I think it. I think this might end up turning. It could possibly turn up, turn into like a martial law type ideal. There, um, it is a. It is an election year. They are going to do everything in their power, in my opinion, um, to make sure Donald Trump is will not be president or not even you know be eligible. <clears throat> and we all know what happens in election years. Shit hits the fan. Just wild stuff happens. But this might be the catalyst that kind of sparks everything off. And yeah, yeah. I for I mean, my my honest opinion is I do think that's bullshit. You know, like I think there's a lot of people that are fed up with um all the people, you know, crossing the border and what have you. We've seen a ton of videos. There was just a video that came out. It was it was a while ago, but it was this guy. And he didn't make like any threat. He kind of made a threat. Someone was asking like, who are you? What are you doing? And, and the guy was like, you don't know who I am, um, but you're going to know soon enough. And come to find out like he's on the fucking the terrorist like watch list. And so I don't know. I think there's a lot of I think it's all fucked. I think it's fucked. And I think a lot of people in Texas are are fed up with the shit. And so I don't know what's going to end up happening, but it also might be like a setup to have all these people trying to protect their border, all the citizens and what have you. It might turn into something like the January 6th issue. And from there, it's just going to spiral. And I think out of all, not all states, but m m the majority of states like Texas is the one that they're, they're going to fucking, they're going to hold their ground. 100%. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's it's um i was listening to alex jones earlier today and you said this might be the thing that sparks um whatever is going to get sparked and uh he was saying that this is the shot heard around the world uh and all that kind of stuff to me it's just ridiculous how how blatant and how clear do you have to make it that you want this country fucked than saying no, we're not going to let you protect your border. And not only that, but we may even like punish you for actually standing up for your, for your state. We may actually <clears throat> send in our own national, whatever, send in our guys to clear out your guys. And, and it, to me, it's just, it's so evident, so clear. It's like, this is a <clears throat> world economic forum takeover. And then this isn't just happening in the United States. This is happening in France. This is happening in Sweden. This is happening all over the place where everybody's just like, drop your borders, drop your pants, let them stick it in. You know what I mean? And uh, so it, it, this is an interesting one though. And I don't know what's going to happen. I just had a guy on from Sweden and we played that trailer to uh civil war. And he's like, he was like, I don't know. I see the American people maybe turn to something like this. And in my head, I'm like, dude, it ain't going to happen. 
Like, I don't see a civil war. I don't see how that plays out. I got fat Susan over here, who's a Democrat, and Billy, the 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 bodybuilder, who's a Republican. Like, I, I don't see how this goes down. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and not only that, but most Republicans have rifles, ammo. They, they have shit to, anyways. And then most Democrats are like, you know, free Palestine and stand in front of cancer fucking things rioting and shit so i don't see the civil war situation i don't know how that plays out but martial law can you get, tap a little bit more into that what would that look like if joe biden did claim martial law do you, any of you guys have an idea on that um i know that i don't think um i think you could stay in stay in office for as long as the martial law takes place so the the election would be no and I, I think that's one of the one of the things I'm I'm not too sure though, but I know it's something similar to that. Okay, so that that, that's, yeah, that's would basically. It, would it be just another way to retain power and postpone the election and all that stupid shit while they figure it out? It's it's kind of like like COVID like COVID protocol like curfews. Don't go outside. You can only go to the store on these days. You could only you know things like that so i mean it makes sense that was that could have all been prepped you know oh it's just like so instead of it being martial law we'll just be like oh it's like covid you know we did all this in covid it's fine but it, it's bigger than that it's more of a um a police state military presence um and i don't know if i, I think i don't know if the the federal government does martial law per state or if it's a, a nationwide um, protocol. I'm not too sure on the, the regulations of it. So I forgot what I was that's a good ask. point. Go for it. Go for it, Kyle. Yeah, no, that no, that's a good point. I, I don't I, I agree with uh, with Facebook. I don't know if if that will be on like a whole United States level or if that would only pertain to Texas. But that was also my thought that that and I'm not a thousand percent on this. I would have to look up what, like, what actually would, oh, what actually would have to happen to postpone the election. But I would love to think that I'm correct when I say that martial law is definitely probably one of them. Um, and yeah, but then in this, in the same breath, the election is what, and isn't it in like November? Yeah, is when yeah. it kind of starts. So if that is the case. And martial law might be a um, uh, might come out of all this. Like we're almost what ten months away, or maybe nine months away. It's about to be February, so I feel like they would want to do that a little bit closer to the election time. But who knows? Maybe this is going to be like a, a drawn out process. And it doesn't hit for a while, but but even in the same breath, if martial law happens, I don't think it's just going to be a month of martial law. People are gonna. There's a lot of pissed off people right now, and I think it's going to last a lot longer than that. So, yeah, that, that you could be very, 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 very like nail on the head on that one. Heck, what I are your that, thoughts? Yeah, yeah, man. And I want I wanted to let these fine gentlemen go first because you know I can get carried away with my thoughts. <laughs> Do it. I, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but I can talk a little bit. <laughs> and this kind of hits a little close to home for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, my boss's son, who now works with us up there at the shop, he is a member of the Arkansas National Guard as a uh He's basically a paralegal, and he just returned home from being stationed down on the border in Texas. So he's seen this firsthand. The other thing, the other way it hits close to home is because if Texas falls, I'm going to be the first to know. Between Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, like we're going to find out real quick. So what I think is happening, honestly, and this is people are going to roll their eyes, but it's the great replacement theory. 
and this is not a conservative conspiracy theory. This isn't some MAGA idea. This is straight from the liberals themselves. Put in, put in, uh, gravy in super clip great replacement theory and they'll come up a video it's a super clip of all of these uh democrats and uh left-wing talking heads in the media space going on about how they can replace us so what you've been having over the last few years is a mass exodus from blue states into red states and what what we're left with is these blue states realize that if they do not fill the void that these people left, then when the census rolls back around or when somebody else takes power, you can redistrict your areas, which affects how many congressmen you have out of your state. It also affects how many uh, electoral votes could come out of a state. There's a lot at play with population. Every, everything down from the election to how much money a city can get from federal grants for whatever is all tied to the population. And so this great replacement theory is – let 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 whoever leave wants to leave because we can replace them. We can bring in foreign immigrants, and because we brought them in, we being the liberals, Democrats, we can bring them in. We can give them all these benefits, set them up in, in up on up on the Sunset Boulevard, dress them to the nine, give them flaming yarn every day of the week with a free cell phone, which is an iPhone fifteen, and we're gonna give them. They go wake up in a new Bugatti. And and in turn, all of these people are going to vote Democrat. They're, they're going to reward the hand that fed them. And that, in, in, in a nutshell, is the great replacement theory, is bringing in outside votes to replace the votes that left with the idea that the votes you're bringing in are only going to vote for your party. By spoiling so, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drew, you can get on your phone right now and get amnesty on an app. You can be a, a, a non-U.S. citizen and apply and be granted amnesty on an app on your phone. That's crazy. Founding fathers are shitting themselves. Let's take a look back and I believe this was during Trump's presidency. Remember when France had that <clears throat> nightclub shooting or bombing or whatever it was? It was a shooting, yeah. Within, within an hour of that shooting, the entire country of France was closed. There was no traffic in. There was no traffic out. The airspace was closed. The borders were closed. France was on lockdown, and France took care of their shit. America's not granted that same right. America is not allowed to close its borders and take care of its shit. And so when you have that mentality, plus the mentality of we need to replace votes, we need to pad the stats in our favor, you end up with a situation like you have in Texas. But here's the kicker. Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, the lieutenant colonel or lieutenant governor of Texas, that that good fellow, and every other government official in Texas have the constitutional authority to do exactly what they're doing, which is protecting their borders because the federal government by way of Joe Biden's administration is negligibly not doing their duty. The federal government has a constitutional duty to protect the borders of the United States of America. 
that's in there. I think that's the Fourth Amendment. Somewhere down in there in the Fourth Amendment. You also have later on in the Constitution where it says that if the federal government does not do that, the state can. Because in the United States, the law of the federal government is not the end-all, be-all. The, the United States Constitution is the end-all, be-all. It doesn't matter what Joe Biden says. If it goes against the Constitution, it's null and void. The Constitution supersedes any law of the land. So Greg Abbott is doing what the Constitution says. So how regardless can he be, of who how is can, opposing that, how can he be punished by that? Because he's because he's directly opposing the sitting administration who's in charge of the federal government. Yeah, but fuck the federal government. If the exactly if the, if, if it's, we're we're dealing with an state. administration that is corrupt, is bought and paid for by China. Yeah, and does not care about the rule of law does not care about morality and decency and the common goodwill of man. All they care about is obtaining and retaining as much power as they can. But here's the thing that they forgot. Fellas, what's the key slogan you think of when it comes to Texas? Don't fuck with you Texas. You don't mess with Texas. Guys, I don't know if y'all understand how truly big Texas is. How many people inhabit Texas? Brothers, there ain't enough soldiers in the United States to go take Texas <laughs> by force. See, that's why when Kyle was saying martial law, I kept shaking my head because there ain't a chance in hell. Assuming you could Not get enough of our, our military members to actually go through with it, because our military members, just like us, have a constitutional duty to overthrow whoever gives the order of a tyrannical order, unconstitutional order, etc. I don't know of anybody in the National Guard in Texas or in any other state that's going to side with the federal government as I knock my camera over You're good. and 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 literally take up arms against Texas authorities. Dude, I don't, you're I don't, saying, are you maybe saying if you had a battalion full of trannies, then they would probably do it. But there's too many right. people like us in the military. They're not going to do it. You cannot enforce martial law with the with the recent you will have to which leads me back to why they're doing this because there's senators and congressmen in in right now today that are trying to get these illegal immigrants in the military yeah yep because that's their force that they that will enforce this bullshit yep but here's the here's the here's the problem it doesn't matter if they try to enforce martial law or not between the good old people still left in this world or in the military and in the civilian world, they do not stand a chance. I would like to think that I would like to believe that. And that's where my heart goes. That's where I'm like, <clears throat> damn, dude, I don't, I don't know right, how much I really this. know about people from Texas. Oh, I do, you do oh, not yeah. go yeah. fucking with them people. Well, what's funny is I work with a guy from Texas, an ex military guy. He's always feeding me oh. the craziest conspiracies. Like, craziest and uh he's seen combat you know he had to go to afghanistan in 2010 he's he's done his duty um and he is somewhat pussy whipped by his wife big time and he wants to leave california i've known this for the best a long of us are my friend oh i am too he's wanting to leave california super bad and uh he's not going to he's like i'm gonna die in california he's like and he's from texas and he has one rule with his wife. <clears throat> he says, if Texas secedes, I'm going and helping him. And like, so today he goes, he goes, my wife, he goes, she knew it from the beginning that if Texas ever seceded, I'm going to go help. And like, he's like, so, and he's looking at me and he's like, it, this is getting close to that time. And like, so uh, it's Texas people are not people to mess with. He's the craziest 
hardest guy I know in, in Southern California, and he's from Texas. And so he's probably like, just an average Joe over there. Average in Texas. Joe Schmo lived, grew up. He's like, yeah. I'd and he's like, I lived outside of town. I, I, you know, most of the time I spent my time out in the woods, carving sticks, all that. You know what I mean? Like, he's just a good old Texas boy. But you know how I know this, the, the, that, that Biden and them don't have a chance in hell, even if they try to federalize the National Guards in the states? Already, at this point in time, 25 other Republican governors in the United States have publicly uh, spoken in support of Governor Greg Abbott. I will read those states It's to you. N- I- It is not just Texas, my friend. You have half of the United States ready to go to fucking war with the federal government. You ready to hear them? Alabama, yep. Alaska, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, Southern Cal- or South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming, and shame on you, Kansas. I'll tell you what. Who's gonna Who's gonna beat them? Out. Who's gonna beat that? Who's that, gonna beat that fucking unstoppable cadre of forces? Who's gonna Who's really fucking with them yeah, states? Oh no shit! Right. Who's fucking with them states? Yeah. Here's what's gonna happen. Joe Biden's gonna federalize all 50 National Guard units or state units and 25 of them are going to go fuck you. Half. Yeah. And then a bunch of the f- members of the other 25 are going to go fuck you and defect to one of them 25 states that you just read off. It's 100. those plus Texas. It's actually 26. And Texas yeah. counts for at least four states in this battle. So we're <laughs> heavily outweighing. Come on. I, no, I love it. I love it. When you first started out, you got me a little nervous. You know, you're like, fuck, it's close to home. I'm about, I'm going to have to arm up. And like, I'm like, but then now that you're talking, you <clears throat> America. I mean, it, the, it, the, it's a sobering thought, Drew. It's very sobering. Very, very, very sobering. I mean, think about it. We could seriously be in a situation where the federal government actively tries to unalive us. Simply because we want to uphold the Constitution. Exactly. Exactly. Just because we're upholding the Constitution. But they exactly. can't have that. Because we're the only thing left between them and the New World Order. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, which leads me to my next thing. You know, I like Zen, okay? You know the Tea Party? You know the Tea Party, the story of the tea. You know they tax the tea, and then yep. they start a revolution. I don't think they realize the what they're doing. Getting rid of the Zen. <laughs> There's a lot of fucking good old boys who are into the Zen, and I'm just saying that they're fucking. They're barking up too many trees, and the bears are about to come down. And uh, so, any other comments on the border from you? Um, Kyle or UK swag. Do you guys want to touch on that? I did see a bunch of farmers show up. I, I sent it to UK swag before we, yeah, got I saw have you guys too. seen that, that video? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that was pretty cool. Kyle, have you seen that or Hank? Have you guys seen the video of all the Is farmers it? in Texas showing up to the border? I have not. Oh, it's bitching, man. It's no a bunch of farmers and tractors. Like, I don't know, maybe a, maybe 10,000. And I guarantee you on every tractor, there's a rifle. Oh, a lot of rifles. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm the whole reason you, for the like, Second I, Amendment is to protect our, our our country from this shit. I know people that wouldn't go enlist in the military if you gave them a million dollar signing bonus. But when it comes to defending their piece of dirt, are willing to die over it. And you ain't got to be in the South to be country, to be redneck, to be. To be Southern, being Southern is more that because like every every state you just listed, when you say Wyoming, the first thing I think about it, there's some redneck ass motherfuckers up there in Wyoming. <laughs> like that's just like some Texas North, boys. you know. I was like, exactly, dude. Like even I met a dude from Oregon when I was going through basic that was just as redneck as I was, and you you could just got to realize that there is a lot of people 
that do not side with Joe Biden or anybody in that party in their way of thinking. You'd be shocked. Southern California has the same thing that you're talking about. And Corey's from SoCal, freaking yep. Kyle's from SoCal. And like you, exactly what you said, man, I work with guys who sound like this, like, Hey Drew, how y'all doing today? And I'm like, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Temecula. Like, like <laughs> that, it's SoCal. Like, I'm like, dude, you're more redneck than me. And I'm from a town 800 in Kansas. <laughs> You're right. They're <laughs> everywhere, bro. Even in Southern California, even in the state that gets ripped on the most. Like when you think about somebody helping Texas, the last people you think is is California. And I guarantee you, a lot of Southern California. And it's funny you say help. that because who 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 are the allies in that new Civil War movie? Texas and California. Interesting. So right? to touch on that, so. This is actually, I, at the time I was living in Northern California, but this was right when the whole like pandemic rolled out. And that was also when like, oh no, 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 I'm sorry. That was when that, when that rolled out, but this, that was when the whole like BLM and the Antifa shit happened. Well, a couple not so bright Antifa members decided uh, my hometown that I grew up in, Yucaipa, California would be the town to fuck with. And they were um, they were surprised. <clears throat> I was up at NorCon. I seen this video on YouTube, and it was my fucking town. And it was a bunch of Antifa members rolling up to a Valero gas station, and some people that I know beat the fucking brakes off of these dudes. <laughs> beat the brakes. And I'm like, I'm looking at this on YouTube, and I'm like, dude, that's fucking you know this Wildwood in California Street. Like, holy shit. Every single, so you type a boulevard, it's a really huge boulevard that goes up and they ended up painting. So, you know, when you're, you're on the road, right. And you have like the, the, the marks on the, on the road. And then they have like the little bicycle, the little, the white line on the right and left-hand side for the bicycle lanes. Those have all been painted and it's probably, I don't know, five, six miles worth of uh, boulevard. And they repainted that all red, white, and blue. All of the owners of all the shops on on Yucaipa Boulevard were sitting outside on chairs, like lawn chairs, with their fucking rifles and their weapons, just prepared. Like this is not a town you you fuck. Come with. on, um, I am not like I love everybody, but there's a lot of skinheads in this town and a lot of country folk in this town. Um, again, I do not support that, but they are. You, you, it's just not a place you're going to want to come and do some shit like that. So touching on what you were saying, Drew, like, no, there's a lot of hardcore. I would lie to I would American be lying lovers, to you if man. I told, if, if I don't see a big <clears throat> lifted like F-250 every single day with a fuck Joe Biden flag and a <laughs> United States flag, I would be lying to you if I, if I told you I did not see that almost every single day. Yeah. Yep. And it's it's everywhere, bro. I, I think a lot of times I, I come to this idea of like, because we do self-censor ourselves. If you, if you think about it, all four of us, part of me self-censors in my thoughts. And, and, and that's where that George Orwell book comes into play. And I think about it. Like I'm over here wanting to say, yeah, Biden, you want to fuck with America? Check it out, dude. You're going to get fucked up the ass. But part of me is like, oh, Drew, don't say that. You could be somebody watching this, and blah, blah, blah. Why wouldn't I say that? I'm a true American. I love this fucking country. This guy's literally ruining it. And I have to sit back and like appease in my head to understand why he's doing it instead of just saying, no, fucker, you're the enemy. And like, <clears throat> that's where I'm at in general. Like, whenever I think about all this stuff, I'm just like, this guy is the enemy of the United States of America. He truly is. He is bought and paid for, like Hank said, by China. And at the end of the day, he's going to do all that he can to give this country away and do the replacement thing, like Hank said, and basically make it communism, whatever. I swear to God, like there's no chance this guy can win in 2024. If he does, and this is kind of where I'm at too, I, I wanted to ask you, we we're talking rigged football. Do you guys think the election is rigged completely? Do you think there's no hope for Trump to get in? 
I'm going to I'm going to say this loudly and proudly. In November, I'm going to go vote and I think every single person in America that is legally able to should go vote. Yep. I don't care if you tell me that they're selected not elected. I don't care if you tell me it's rigged. I don't care how many 3 a.m. mail mail in ballot drops that they're going to do. I don't care because doing nothing is not the answer. Just right. because there's plenty of conservatives that don't believe that voting works, but you know who does? The fucking liberals. And you know who shows up to the ballot boxes? Fucking liberals. And for better or worse, they go vote for them motherfuckers with D's next to their name every time. And the only way that we honestly have to affect any kind of change is to go vote. It starts locally, but you have to vote nationally too. Like, I, I cannot fathom the mindset of I know it's rigged, so I'm going to do nothing. Knowing that the the side that you currently are in opposition of is doing everything they can to keep their, their wheel spinning. It's just the most insane argument I've ever heard. And I agree. So I do believe that you should go vote. Yes, I know it's rigged. Does that mean you should give up? No. If you're getting... if I. It, Drew, if a man's sitting there hitting you in the face, but you know he's bigger and badder than you, are you just going to let him keep hitting you in the face? Fuck no, I'm smacking him. (laughs) The only thing we have to do to fight back that we know of is vote. Yeah, 100%. I'm with you and a lot of people. A lot of people I know, they just... I've been telling them that too because they just are like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm like, no, you have to. It's the only thing you got. That's what they want you to believe that it yep. doesn't yep. matter. Yep. Go for it. And that, uh, that also that also could be like a fucking who knows? That could be like some crazy psyop where after the last election, everyone's like, dude, there's no fucking point. There's call me really crazy. No I think it still matters, y'all. I think it, it no, still I matters do. that if you show I up and, and cast your lot, it, it is literally the most American thing you can do is to go cast your vote for a leader i agree and that that's something that that i was told my 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 late stepmom always told me which is i don't even know how this even got brought up because i was never like ever especially when i was a lot younger i was never really like political at all didn't really give a shit but she was like you cannot bitch about the election you cannot bitch about who's president if you don't at least go out and vote you have no right to say in my yep. opinion you have that's I agree my that you have no you have no right to talk about it so if you're if you're one of those that that says like it's all fucking rigged that's pointless then i would really appreciate it if i don't hear anything out of your mouth for the next four fucking years when it comes to anything fucking political because if you're not voting then what's the you have no say because you didn't you you don't have a say because you chose not to have a say, right? And I do agree also, Hank, to it, it, a lot of this shit can be fixed, not not the grand scheme of things, but locally, locally, because when you have, you know, a large amount of people that are fighting for something, like numbers matter, and we trump all the, the elites out there. There are more of us than there are of them. And so you start locally and you start changing, you know, what that looks like in your area. It does matter. It really honestly does. It does matter. And it sucks for those who, who, and I don't blame also the people that are just, I guess, black pilled and they're like, fuck it, dude. Like there's no fucking point. But, um, yeah, it's, 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 I think it's imperative. I voted last year. Um, or not last year. I'm sorry. I voted four years ago. I'm gonna vote again this year and fucking hope for the best. That's all you can do. And uh, uh, you know, I 
I was talking to my boss and he's a smart guy. When he retires, he's going to come on this podcast. You would love him, Hank. He's 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 my welding boss. And uh <clears throat> he's like, if there was a civil war, do you know how quick the cities would fall and all the real Republican countries would or the Republicans in around the country would thrive? He goes, just cut off the resource, cut off the truck drivers. Cut off the food to all those, the bloodline to those major cities. It's done. They'll consume yep. themselves. It's over. Like their voting platform is gone. He's like, he's like, it's, it's not even a discussion to him. He says, and I agree. I'm with him hundred percent on that. That's why I'm not too worried about it. It's like, it'd be them shooting themselves in their foot. If they really did escalate this to that. I don't see it happening that way. I know this, this situation in Texas is uh, just about as fragile as Hank's videography, but <laughs> but but the truth is like like it is fragile it is scary it is it is uh depressing when you see the conflict going on between um the fake joe biden and and gabbit and so like to me it's all fresh and new so like sometimes those things can get concerning but i like to see these things play out and see what the real leaders do in the right situations so we'll see how this all plays out but um I, I, I didn't really have much else to talk about tonight. I just had those two big topics and you guys crushed it. You guys literally carried this on for about an hour and 10 minutes, but, um, to lighten up the mood, I was going to ask, uh, you guys about the breaking bad series. And I was going to tell you about how they did or tried to, they're trying to ban Zen right now. And I want to talk about this a little bit because I can't, I quit chew four years ago because of Zen. And Hank, you were asking me what it was, right? Right. So it's just a, it's, it's, it's got three ingredients. It's uh salt, nicotine, and mint flavor. So it's just three ingredients. And I think the Copenhagen I was chewing for 15 years had like a thousand ingredients, you know what I mean? Sure. And so, uh, I, I really do like this stuff and I, 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 I gave it to my other friends who were trying to quit you and they all quit. We all do Zen. And I promise you, like, it's insane. The numbers, you guys want me to read what, um, what old homeboy had to say about it. Uh, the hey, guy Schumer or what's his name? Uh, Chuck Schumer. Yeah. Let me see if I can find this. <clears throat> Senator okay. So, Chuck Schumer. Yeah. Senator Chuck Schumer, the basically the, yeah, I won't even dick with eyeballs, but, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer called this week for a crackdown on Zen, a nicotine pouch that has become increasingly popular in the United States, alongside the re the rise of the so-called Zenfluencers, um, who tout the product online. Nationwide sales of nicotine pouches, which users tuck into their upper lips, rose dramatically, with 808 million pouches sold in the first three months of 2022 alone. According to the analysts of four major brands, Zen which has quickly established a large footprint in the United States, accounted for the majority of sales in the analysis. These nicotine pouches seem to lock their sights on young kids, Senator Schumer said, warning that products like Zen could hook a new generation of nicotine. And so they're, 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 I think big tobacco is in the, in the pockets of these senators. And I think Marble, Copenhagen, they're all realizing, holy shit, this guy Drew we had for 15 years. For the last four years, we haven't had him. And this is happening in rampant numbers. And I think that's exactly what's happening. And sure enough, they're overreaching, lining their pockets, and they're banning something that's actually probably a lot more like healthy than big tobacco. So that's what's going on, Hank. And that, I guarantee I'm you, if you, if you could have access to all his investments and shit. I guarantee you Chuck Schumer has deep ties into tobacco somehow. I guarantee you he's got a lot of money tied up with one of the major tobacco companies. And he, all, like you said, all he's doing is protecting his investment. We all know that any congressman worth their salt is involved in insider trading. That's how they all go into you know public office with a modest net value and then they leave multi-millionaires <laughs> yeah. sometimes multi-billionaires and um 
I think it's really, really fucked up that once again, corporate America is rearing its ugly head and stomping on the face of something that could actually do people good. Exactly. I mean, tobacco, tobacco use is nothing new in the history of humanity, but the cigarettes that I'm smoking today aren't the same cigarettes that my grandfather was smoking when he was a kid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he was smoking tobacco. We same hemp, thing. Hemp paper. Yeah. And now it's shit that ro- roaches won't even fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Like if the bugs won't even fuck with it, you know, it's something serious. And so it's just the, uh, Big pharma, big tobacco, big everything trying to keep us addicted. Because like you said, you're not the only one that they haven't had for four years. And I guarantee you that was a size. It's it's sizable enough that Congress is trying to ban it. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. Like that's, that's a hell of a, a, a margin of loss for for that to happen. But we've seen I don't, it time and time I again. Don't, I don't see I don't see this I don't see this passing. I don't I don't, I don't either. Re- I, California already took the flavors okay. away. Like this is chill. Like I I love wintergreen and they took away the flavors so if I do want wintergreen I have to order in bulk online, which is probably the smartest thing to do if you're into zen, but um they already did that a year and a half ago and I was pissed about that. And then now I'm seeing this Senator Schumer saying you know we're gonna try to do a crackdown and a ban on zen and i'm like are you freaking kidding me this it's it's insane but i did a sorry i did a i i was doing we i did a show a while back um i don't know how long it was ago but we were talking about like power grid power grid goes out i was Um, on that with you yeah 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 yeah. so we we did and and maybe okay maybe then maybe i mentioned it twice but like if you picture and this this is why this is why i get like why this relates to like zin is that if shit hits the fan right there are people that need their 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 medication maybe they're fucking three types of crazy and they need their medication or you're like my fiance who is dependent on insulin like she doesn't have insulin, she dies. It's very, very cut and dry, very simple. Shit is going to hit the fan. Like it's not going to be good, and it'll almost turn into its own like martial law. You know, everyone fend for themselves. But you take away nicotine, right? You're doing it the safest way. You're not hitting a vape. You're not smoking a cigarette. In my opinion. That would be the most safest way to consume to get your nicotine fix is a little fucking pouch with three ingredients. If you take that away, it's not going to be good. And tea party, you're baby. still, you're yeah, exactly, exactly. That's exactly what you what you let off with. You're still going to be able to get them though. I want to give you some hope, and you probably already know this, but you're still going to be able to get them. That all that's going to do is the black market's going to go up. My mom smokes menthol cigarettes. They ban menthol in California. I will say, though, flavored vapes, I get them all day at liquor stores all day. Up in Northern California, I went up there. Luckily, I bought a couple extra vapes when I was on vacation. They have, they're all called naked. They have no flavor at all. I don't even know what it tastes like because I didn't fucking buy it. Sounds like shit. But um, my mom gets her cigarettes still from someone that goes to Mexico and brings them back. So you're still going to be able to get them, but it's still the fact that you're going to have to buy in bulk. My mom has to buy them by the carton. She can't go buy a pack. She buys them by the carton. Like, I don't know how often she goes, but she goes and she doesn't go to Mexico. She picks them up at a pool hall um, down the road where she shoots pool. And, um, but yeah, that's not going to be good. And it's crazy too, also to think what, like kind of like what Hank mentioned, um that these this is money out of like a lot of fucking people's pockets i just don't see that necessarily going down like people that don't chew don't smoke maybe never had a drop of nicotine in their life 
they have money in this and they're not willing they're not going to be willing to lose that money that is true and, and court you said that you're uh you're also in southern california oh uh, well i mean i live in idaho now but i'm fr oh, but from lake El yeah i grew up in lake elsinore yes. california okay riverside, riverside yes, county so yep yeah. i'm in riverside i'm in riverside county right now uh oh, nice. what's it like over there in idaho like are they is this First of all, let me ask this. Is Zinn, is this like a, a United States ban or is this more of like a California thing? And United States. Now it is. United States. Okay. Yeah. So but are so I noticed you were ripping on a you were ripping on something over there. Are you able to get yeah. flavored stuff? Yeah, flavored flavored whatever. Yeah. They it's no no bans here. I actually have some um uh well these are they're it's like the same thing like Zinn, it's called Rogue. And it's it's a mango mango pouches same same thing just different brand, um, but yeah it's I don't know <laughs> like my my brother's in um in California right now and he uh, he he chews and when they cut that off like um, he came up and visited and he bought like two logs you know just to hold them over for a while, um, but he was talking about going going to some other different brand that uh, isn't really like a, a tobacco product but it's just a straight nicotine product but they still have flavors of it um i think it's i think that's uh buffalo buffalo, buffalo something Trace. yeah yes so. yeah yeah shout out shout out to the sean ryan podcast just saying <laughs> um, but i think he, he promotes that as well because he was he was a, a navy seal and you know navy. that's a thing yeah. That's not a show you can just listen to every day. <clears throat> that that's a show that you got to be in a certain mind frame to be able to listen to Sean Ryan because boy, he be having some some guys on his show, and God bless them. But their stories are just whew. dude. I was tearing up at work one day. I'm listening to this guy, and I'm just like trying to keep my shit together. But I'm like, I'm not doing too well. But have you guys both? Have you guys heard? You guys are familiar. With I, I've heard. Right? Um, I've heard clips. I haven't watched the, or or listened oh. to a whole whole podcast. What's his it's name? But yeah, I, it's the Sean I know Ryan what you're talking show. about, though. Um, yeah, I've 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 heard some stories that oh, I have. got me pretty yeah. emotional too. So. He's he ooh. he had ooh. he's ooh yeah he got me into he direct energy a... weapons. He got me into like knowing about Antarctica, oh, really? the direct energy <laughs> weapon, probably what hit. Hawaii like I was listening to him and then Hawaii happened and he was just talking about it and I was like what oh shit yeah there's no doubt I know I'm going off the rails a little, little go bit. for it boys um, we're not off here the script. can go anywhere not off the script okay we, we did enough script talking but I'm going off the rails but <laughs> let's go there's off there's no way dude there's no fucking way no fucking way that there was not a direct energy weapon used in Hawaii. Like, there's no possible way. It's just not possible. It's I literally the most logical explanation at this point. And <laughs> yeah. did, did you guys know that there is a book that came out the day after? My dad actually owns this yes. book. My dad owns it. It came out. It came the day after the Maui fires, and it's all about fires in Maui. The day yep. after. Yep. And if you go on Amazon, I'll try to remember the name, but if you go on Amazon and look it up, it'll literally say the exact date in which that, that book came out. And it's the day after, I want to say the day after, or maybe two days after, don't, don't quote me on that, after the fires. When's the last time y'all have even heard anything about Maui? On, it just on, fell on off the, the map. Or any, yeah. anywhere, I, like I it's not even problem. being mentioned in yeah. many podcasts. Um, I think it was a couple days ago. I saw that they um, they're actually uh, like rallying there now, like the people, like of yeah. of Hawaii, all the locals and stuff. They there was like at least like a hundred thousand people um, that went there and gathered, and they were doing like a little thing. But yeah, you didn't hear about that. You know what I mean? Did, did Nobody, they ever let them no, back they, into? The, no, they, the they're town? they're at the fence. They're at oh, the fence. Wow. Yeah, there's a hundred thousand people just around the fence, like the so whole, nobody whole place. ever got to go back home. Like no rebuilding, nope. nothing. No, like they said, here, here's seven hundred bucks. Have a good life, you know. 
but if you but if you come here if you if you cross the border illegally um we'll we'll hook you up with three meals a day um a hotel room <laughs> a phone we'll we'll pay you fifteen hundred dollars a month you know what i mean That's Dude, they're, they're just building. talking with my with my they're boss building, <laughs> they're no, building no, apartment no. condos for these people that are crossing the border they're building apartment condos nice ones yeah for free and they get yeah. to stay there for free yep. i was just telling my boss yesterday that uh, <clears throat> me and him need to defect and then cross the border illegally so we can have it better than what we got it now <laughs> we don't actually have a better life if we were to enter this country illegally there was a guy chance. i think it was like a like a, a poop like um like a spoof or a parody but he was from new york and it, it's just him walking and he's like day 41 of me walking to walking to mexico so i could declaim my citizenship and get all these benefits that i've never had but i i think he's just joking but it's like he's on day 41 you know and everyone is just him walking you know, that might be the easiest way to fix this fucking problem with the border is like if all the conservatives just defect and then try to then they'd want to throw up they'd a border. That shit if, they, if like a bunch of conservatives yeah. were the ones doing it, they'd want to keep us out quick as hell. Yeah, that's just problem solved for them. <laughs> We'd just have to like take one for the team. Yeah. Remember all those uh, disasters that happened, the one in uh, Ohio? that spill from the train yeah the uh, the, the yeah. ammonia that just went missing the ammonia nitrate well there's just yeah. so many disasters that happened in 2023 that is just not mentioned and it kind of desensitizes me to hearing about disasters to hearing about texas i'm just like yeah of course i mean this is just what happens under joe what biden else is new? what else is new but that's exactly. the that's the that's where because we're in the latter stages of the long con that's been going on since at least the 20s i mean i think i think what we're seeing started at least the current rendition i mean it's probably been going since the great depression you know like that the elites that have that have been in the control the rothschild you know the people that we all can point the blame to and the people that are above them like they've been doing this for a while and all you got to do is listen to what they tell us and they tell us what they're doing. They have to by their karmic law. They believe that they have to tell us. And if we don't, you know, no matter how dumb they present it, if we don't believe it, that's our fault because they told us. And so they've told us that they run this shit and that they're doing whatever they want to and the changes that they want to make. Even if it takes 60 years to make these changes, they're willing to play this long game and do it. It's a gener yeah, they, it's a generational it's they a generational nothing happens overnight. But even to what Drew was saying about the shit in Ohio, there was a movie on that as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In the exact same town. And now we have again, as you mentioned, the Civil War movie. We have uh <laughs> Leave the World Behind. It's uh, like yep. at what point are you a crazy conspiracy theorist and you're, you're just out of your mind and you're correlating these shows and these movies to what's going on but at the same time you would be kind of foolish i guess use some discernment right but you'd be a little foolish to just ignore all these signs because they are there and if anyone's seen i, I don't know if um i think you mentioned it before uh drew on your show uh briefly about the leave the world behind i know hank and i had spoke about it oh yeah um but there's just so much shit and i I've watched that movie three times and, and each time it takes like four hours because me and my fiance are pausing and we're like zooming in and shit trying to motherfuckers see writing this, down notes. Oh, yeah. Shit. yeah. <laughs> Look at that guy. Not Look even that guy on TikTok. Not Look even this. kidding. Flip the number either. upside get... down. Six, six, six. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. But I was finding <laughs> stuff that TikTokers weren't bringing up. And I, but I was also hearing things from TikTokers and Insta, whatever, me, social media, whatever, that I also didn't see. But I was finding shit that no one's, I, have, I haven't heard anyone talk about. Uh, maybe now, I think it's, it's kind of died down a little bit, but it's like, ew. It goes you know back I, to what Hank's saying. You know what I can't wait for <clears throat> is the day that we're standing next to God as his soldiers, because I know all of us are believers. And yep. I, I believe my mom's always told me, Andrew, you have the heart of a soldier for God. 
And she always says that to me. And so to, to bring this back, you know, a lot of people fear, I know my sister listens to this podcast. I know, I know people who are women who listen and, and they get a little scared of hearing this stuff. And like, even a man can, you know, you could feel helpless. And I always revert to in my head when we talk about these things is who is the real, who's the real commander in chief. And that is God. And I do believe that with all this doom and gloom talk and this whole border and like feeling helpless, Joe Biden and oh, what's going to happen. These movies, they're predictive programming. They're also with the karma thing that Hank's talking about. They tell us what they're going to do to us. What can we do? What can we even do? And um, I just want to say you guys are all soldiers. And one day we're going to be standing, I believe, beside God. And and I believe that's when the ultimate battle will be won. But I do want to live a life of prosperity and lean on that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. I, will, I have plans to, um, like, protect you and not forsake you. So, like, I lean on that a lot. And anybody listening who, you know, takes a little bit of fear of what we're talking about, I would say just lean on that, man. I promise you the sun is going to shine. Maybe there's a silver lining, like my cousin said, that 2024 could be the year, our best year yet for all, all four of us. You never know. But um, I got I to gotta wrap this show up. Um, Kyle, Hank, thanks for coming on, dudes. Uh, you guys want to plug your podcast one more time? Yeah, super. Yeah, I'll be super quick. Uh, before that, K-Swag, dude, it was a fucking pleasure man it's all obvious yeah. obviously it's a pleasure it was here. awesome uh drew with you and, and hank as well the last um i think it was i think it was your last episode or two episodes ago but you guys were talking about like PUBG and call of duty i'm like mother i felt like i was like in the show <laughs> i was like i'm talking to myself i'm like yeah dude fucking got the sniper playing a little bit of a battlefield you know you're dro- rolling around in the tanks and i was like oh man dude we got to get together on this for sure do you got a um, PlayStation? Do you got a PS5 or anything? No, I'm all I have an Xbox and I have a PC. Okay. We we gotta somehow Rock. find a game. But, well, I know PUBG, you can link PlayStation and Xbox, and like I could yep. play with you. Um, Cod Call of Duty as well. Call of Duty as well. I haven't played in so long. I was actually telling my fiance yesterday before um uh, telling her that, that I was gonna be on your show and um she was giving me shit because I used to be really bad into gaming, like really bad, like really bad to where it was like, <laughs> what's for dinner, babe? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Look in the freezer, <laughs> like whatever's in the freezer. And I love to cook, but I'm like, no, I'm fucking gaming. <laughs> so I think I can ease into it a little bit. I just have to have a, have to have a little bit of personal um, restraint there. Uh, but we'll definitely make that happen. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, Sunday Night Secret Society, Instagram. Um, we're on Spotify. Um, the pod catchers. Um, I'm still wrapping my head around that term, but whatever pod catcher you're on, that's I'm I'm there. Um, Hank's been on my ass making sure I post the episodes because a lot of the times I slack and after I'm done recording, I'm like, all right, I'm fucking done. I shut my computer, I go sit down, and then I just postpone and postpone and postpone it. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna be on that. I'm gonna be on that. Um, but yeah, Sunday Night Secret Society, come check us out. Hank Dog. I think you can come over on the the six four three conspiracy if you want to hear baseball and sports and general tomfoolery and redneckery. Uh, we're on a uh, Instagram, Facebook, and all your podcast platforms. Come on, K Swag. He he loves the Angels. He actually got me into baseball a little bit because I'm not really a baseball guy. But anytime I'd come, anyways, K Swag. You should go. Yes. You should somehow invite K Swag on your podcast. He's got some baseball. Dude, I'd, I'd I'd love to have you on and talk ball, man. I'm yeah. always looking for people to talk baseball with. I'm I feel like I'm having to teach Kyle again, like he's my little toddler son. <laughs> you I'm are. Having to... You are. These are facts. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I'm an Angels fan, but you know how that goes. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I'm a Cardinals fan, so it's 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 not that much better over there in the league. Yeah. yeah, it's just it just hasn't been good for us for a long time. Well, we saw, definitely got to link up, said, man. Um, said the Angels haven't won a, a postseason game since the the iPad was invented. Oh wow! <laughs> that, yeah, that's <laughs> not even funny, dude. But Mike yeah, Trout, yeah, true. It, it's been. Mike you don't Trout. think about it until you realize until you talk to a fan. 
<laughs> Dude, What's I, your? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You're good. You're uh, good. If if either one of you can reach out, my kids are are, la- are making noise. That's fine, dude. Don't worry about it. Thank you. That's and that's another thing, dude. I'll just tell my fiance real quick. I'm, I know I'm getting sidetracked, but I was like, yeah, dude. The other day I was doing a show, and because sometimes I used to, depending on if I have like someone or when I first started out and I had someone like big on the show, it was like because I'm doing this out of my living room, and this is like I have a very 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 small house, so I don't. <laughs> And oh, I yeah, lo- that's what i lo- that's what i love about you is that the other day rose came in the garage you're like yep. oh hey it's just rose and i'm like dude that is fu- that's awesome <laughs> dude. So this isn't at least I- i'll speak for for my show this isn't professional you all the kid my kids will pop up on my lap hank will be t- talking to his wife or you know have his dog and it's all fucking good and that's why i don't there's no like uh there's no stress or anxiety like linking up with you guys so i i, I appreciate that um oh, yeah and now I completely forgot my train of thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Corey, if you can shoot me or Drew or whatever, hit me up on, on Instagram and Hank so we can link up and make that happen. Yeah. What I'll sure. do is I'll 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 send Corey your guys' Instagram and he'll just follow you guys. Sweet. I'll send it to him after Done. this. But uh, you guys are fucking awesome. I love I love you guys. Having you guys on. Love you, too, brother. We're going to do it again. <laughs> uh, tonight's was a little bit serious. You know, we got into all the crazy doom and gloom of some things and uh but you know what it needs to be discussed we need to have these conversations so that way everybody listening knows hey i'm not alone in my feelings in this i love this country i want to see this country rise from the ashes and uh, it will i truly believe it will um everybody go check out hank and kyle's podcast give them a five-star rating um leave them leave them a comment you know what i'm saying after you're listening to a couple episodes it, it helps insanely in the algorithm um like like Kyle said, doing these things, uh, I do take it very serious. And but at the same time, I realize that these conversations just need to be natural. And you guys crushed it. You guys are always one hundred. And anybody who's gonna start a podcast, you better keep it one hundred because that's the only way to do it. You know what I mean? People find Absolutely, you out. Man. <laughs> All right, dude. Man. I can't love thank you, you enough for the kind words, man. Love you too, brother. Hey. Oh, dude, love, love it. You too, Andrew. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you, good Corey. Yes, awesome you too. You. Looking forward to uh, having you on the show. Come on. Real. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Me too. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody, you guys have a good night. Peace out. <laughs>